happy morning in this session we are going to discuss about an image compression so in image compression it encodes the original image with fewer number of bits the concept behind the image compression is that it reduces the redundancy of the image that is it exploits the correlation between the adjacent pixels of the image to store the data and to transmit the data with fewer number of bits for an image compression there are two types are possible the first one is a lossless compression and the second one is a lossy compression in lossless compression it reduces the size of a file while it is retains the same quality as before it was compressed the examples of lossless compression are png and bmp bitmap form lossy compression it also reduces the size of a file but by removing some portions of an image or some unneeded colors it removes uh, under which we have jpeg gif and tiff in this session i am going to discuss the joint photographic expert group that is jpeg in detail it works on five stages image and block preparation forward dct quantization entropy encoding and frame so the first stage is an image and block preparation so the image and block preparation refers the source image can be captured either by a digital camera or it is a hard copy of an image if it is captured by a digital camera the image is stored in the matrix form that is in the bitmap form each pixel is represented by some bits if it is of an hard copy of an image it is necessary to convert the image into soft copy or it is in the it has to be represented in the form of zeros and ones by means of scanner so the then after preparing this image then it is converted into number of blocks we will discuss all the blocks in detail then these blocks are given as an input to an forward dct then they are quantized and they are given to an entropy encoding there they are undergoing four different stages and finally the encoded information is bitted in the or transmitted this standard format so we will elaborately see the image preparation the images can be an color image or a monochrome image if it is of monochrome image each pixel is represented by 8 bits so the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 255 that vary the in between the values are showing different gray shades the next one color lookup table the possible colors of an image is taken and then in case of color image we all know that the three basic colors are r g and b if a three matrices are required the combination of all the three values together gives the actual picture pixel value or pixel color and another form of representation is luminance chrominance okay here the size of the luminance matrix is comparatively larger than the size of our chrominance matrix why because our eye is more sensitive to the luminance than our chrominance that is the here blue chrominance and red chrominance are taken into one thing and once the image is stored in the form of matrix then they can be decomposed into several blocks the standard size of the blocks used in the jpeg is 8 by 8 and all these blocks are given sequentially to a forward dct dct so in each block you have 8 by 8 that means it constitutes 64 pixel values and when it is transfused uh, when it is transmitted through a dct then it provides the frequency coefficients what is the significance of this transform coding it converts the pixel values into frequency coefficients which is more suitable to perform a compression because our eye is Uh, more sensitive to the low frequency components more sensitive to the low frequency components and less sensitive to the 
high frequency component that's why this pixel values are converted into one frequency coefficient so the 64 pixel values are converted into a matrix that is 64 frequency coefficients this is a standard formula which is used to do the conversion so when you take the first value this white cell i and j are zero that means when i and j are zero this term becomes this cosine term becomes one so when the cosine terms one it coefficient called as dc coefficient that is i j is zero that it gives the mean of all 64 values when i and j equal to 0 that provides our AC coefficients. So, these are our AC coefficients. At in the quantization, the, this, is a, this is an example of a DCT coefficients. You can observe that the DC coefficient is the largest value compared to other coefficients and you can also observe <laughs> the high frequency coefficients are zeros. Now, this is an quantization table. If I am transmitting this 120 as such, I need 7 bits because 2 power 7 is 128. Therefore, to indicate 120, I need 7 bits. If I am using a quantization, this value 120 will be divided by this 10. That yields the value 12. To represent this 12, I need only 4 bits. Therefore, to represent this, I have paid some 3 bits. They likewise, in each coefficients are quantized. Okay, and when you are going for higher threshold values, higher threshold values for higher spatial frequency coefficients. Almost many of them higher frequency coefficients are G. The next stage is an entropy encoding. It involves four different stages. Vectoring. This vectoring refers conversion of this two dimensional matrix into one one dimensional vector. So, when you, have, when you do a zigzag scanning, the format followed is horizontal right, diagonal down, horizontal vertical down, diagonal up, horizontal right. This pattern is repeated until you get the values. So, 12 is a DC coefficient and 6, 7, 3, 3, these are all referred as our AC coefficients. Then, the next one is a differential encoding. It is used to encode the difference between the DC coefficients of adjacent blocks. But only the difference is considered not an absolute value. What is the format which is used for a differential encoding? That is triple S comma value. Where triple S refers the number of bits needed to encode the value. And value refers the actual number of bits that represent the value. We will see with the Assume that these are the DC coefficients, the first column, observe the first column, these are the DC coefficients of the adjacent blocks. While transmitting the first block, he does not have any reference, therefore this 12, to transmit 12, you need 4 bits and its equivalent is 1100. 0, 0. When you take a 13, the, the value, the difference is 1 plus 1, from 12 to need to obtain 13, you need to add 1, therefore the difference is 1. So, the value to be transmitted is 1 and it requires one, 1 bit and the actual representation is also 1. When you want to transmit 11, the difference is minus 2 Say and to represent 2, you need 2 bits and what is an equivalent for 2? It is 1, 0. Since it is a minus 2, its 1's complement representation is used and 11, there is no difference compared to our previous value. Therefore, the difference is 0. When the difference is 0, the encoder will not transmit anything. That means it requires only 0 bits. It is not transmitting anything. 1, 0. Therefore, the difference is minus 1. To represent 1, you need 1 bit. And as it is minus 1, its complement value 0 is true. The next one is the run length coding. Run length coding is used for encoding our AC coefficients. Here we have an encoding format, skip comma value. The skip refers the number of zeros in the run and value indicates the next non-zero coefficient and that is indicated in the form of triple S comma value. So, you assume this, this is the value, so 12 and in between 12 and 6 you do not have any zeros, therefore 0 comma 6. In between 6 and 7 you do not have any zeros, the no, therefore the number of zeros in the run is zeros and here also. 0, 3, 0, 3, 0, 3 and then here you will have 4, 0, 2's and the tail of the string is represented by 0, 0. Therefore, 
you need to transmit totally 63 coefficients are there. So, 3, 6, 9. Totally 9 coefficients only you are transmitting and the remaining coefficients are represented by 0, 0. When the receiver receives this, it will automatically replace all the remaining coefficients as zeros. We will see with assume this. This is the coefficients to be transmitted. Therefore, 0, 6 and in between 6 and 7 you do not have any zeros. Therefore, 0, 7 and in between 3 and 7 you have 3 zeros in the run. Therefore, 3, 3. The next non-zero coefficient is 3 and 0, 1 and 0, 0. In this way, the information is transmitted. So, to transmit 6, you need 3 bits. Therefore, 1, 1, 0. To transmit 7, you need 3 bits. 1, 1. But to transmit 3 also, you need 2 bits. To transmit 1, you need 1 bit. That is being, trans being transmitted. The frame header fields indicates the overall width and height of an image and the number and type of components that are used to represent the values. The type of components, it can be clutch, RGB, OCBCR and the digitization format used or indicated. And in the scan header field, you will have the components representation RGB and the bits used to represent or digitize the component and the value. This is our JPEG decoder schematic. It performs just the reverse operation of JPEG encoder. So, the encoder bitstream is initially given to one frame decoder, then half line decoding and then differential decoding and run length encoding. These coefficients are then dequantized using the tables which are same as that of the tables which we used on the transmitter side that is on the encoder side and then the dequantized coefficients are apply to an inverse discrete cosine transform. Therefore, you will get back the pixel values. These pixel values are used to build an image and that image can be seen in the display or it can be stored in a memory or video RAM.